Exoplanetary, the adventures of the spacefaring Wolverton family far in the future. When you meet someone on the street, how do you know they're a real human being? Do you take a stranger's pulse? Do you count the number of times they blink? Of course not. People are people, wherever you go. In the age of exoplanetary, however, this is not a foregone conclusion. Artificial intelligence has given way to what can only be described as mechanical life. That's who Ben Wolverton works with. Androids, largely indistinguishable from any human being, work throughout the solar system. They have skin and a pulse. They blink often enough to keep you from feeling uncomfortable. They also think, hope, feel, and dream. Sometimes they even do these things better than humans. So, when you meet someone on the street, don't ask yourself if they're human. Ask yourself if you're human. Check your pulse, blink, take a deep breath, and listen to tonight's episode, Love for Sale. Dear Mom, thank you for the birthday card. I'm sorry if my last letter was a downer, but work's been difficult lately. You know me. I've never had any patience for fools. Something interesting did happen recently, though. Hello, I'm Ben Wolverton. What do you want? How'd you get here? From the Exoplanetary Corporation. You know, Exo... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Come in. I'm sorry. I forgot you're coming tonight. I- I've had a long day. I understand entirely. We could reschedule. No, 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 no. We're, do- we're taking care of this tonight. Oh, good. It's a two-day flight. Now, I'm going to tell you, Mr. Wolverton, I pay damn good money for your company's product. More-, more money than I ever paid on anything in my life. And I don't think it's unreasonable to want it to function within my expectations. Of course. I just need to see the unit and we can get started. Are you Ben Wolverton? Thank goodness. This has really gone on long enough. Hello, Lucy. May I see your diagnostics? Oh, of course. I keep it right here in the living room. Not that he knows how to read them. I can read them just fine. He comes home after a long day and complains, but he never asks me about my day. I've had just as long a day, but it doesn't matter to him one bit. No, no, it's all about him. You see what I'm putting up with? He's never happy with what I cook for him. He never notices how clean the apartment is. Has he ever once noticed when I change my hair or try a new scent? All she does is complain. Complain and nag. He really is the pits, Mr. Wolverton. Let's let's all sit down for a moment and talk about this. Sit down? Talk? you got to be kidding me. Get your tools out, Wolverton. Lucy's supposed to be the best android human replica exo cells. I'll be paying her off for another three years, but your ad say I'm supposed to enjoy Lucy for the rest of my life. I haven't even liked it for the last six months. Can we please sit down? Oh, I should offer you something, Mr. Wolverton. Would you care for some tea? I would love some tea. Thank you, Lucy. Mr. Blake, Harry, if I may, I understand that sometimes being in close quarters with a strong personality can be challenging, but I'm looking at Lucy's diagnostics and I'm not seeing evidence that indicates that there's anything wrong with her. We're talking about a machine. If my dinner gets burned, it isn't because I hurt my oven's feelings. Yes, but it might mean that you aren't using the oven properly. More to the point... Most ovens aren't programmed with human personality. But she's not a human. Yes, but she's programmed to act human, and Exo does a really good job. I'll say, I haven't fought like this since my ex-wife. So, you've been married. Yeah, it didn't work out. We we fought like hell, and when I had an opportunity to mine this asteroid, I jumped at the chance. You know, mining works like that. You, You can't let something like a marriage hold you back when there's money to be made. This job, it turned out real rich, so I decided to finally get what I wanted. And what was it you wanted? The thing I saw on the edge, the perfect companion for someone far from the urban centers. You know, a companion to to cook, to clean, and attend to other matters. And she doesn't cook, she doesn't clean, she doesn't do the other stuff? She does all of the above and more. Here's your tea, Mr. Wolverton. Please, call me Ben, both of you, please. I know this has been a trying experience for you both, but I want you to know that I'm determined to help you find a way to make this a successful... Don't don't say relationship. What other word is there? In our effort to work and live in the wider solar system, we've found that machines that think like humans make the process simpler. Our ancestors enjoyed technology, 
but they grew frustrated with how early personal computers were limited to a screen, a keyboard, and a very impersonal operating system. As we spent more time with machines, it was inevitable that we made them as easy to communicate with as humans. The problem is it also makes them as difficult to deal with as a real woman. <gasps> wow. He done went there. Harry, Harry, I'm sympathetic. I find dealing with people as difficult as the next person, but I'm having a hard time understanding something. I mean, if you knew that Lucy was going to look, act, and even feel like a real woman, and you're... Well, there's no nice way to put this, Harry. You're kind of a sexist. Only not kind of, but very actually sexist. What the... You, you, then why did you even bother? But You can't just come in here and insult me like that. It's totally out of line. Am I being out of line? You'll have to note it on the customer service survey. But am I wrong? I'm not a sexist. I reject that. Just just because I've been divorced, I just... I thought, I thought it would be... Yeah, here, look. You can't come into my home and talk to me. Wait, like you nearly had it. You were going to tell me what you expected. I thought it would be different. I, I thought uh, I thought she would just do what I told her to do. I, I spend 10 hours a day with mining equipment. It's a little interactive, but nothing like Lucy. It, it doesn't talk back. That mining equipment doesn't have a personality. It can speak to you, but it can't have a conversation with you. And it sure as hell can't love you. Neither can you. I think about you all the time. I worry about you when you're at work. I feel joy when you come home. I fuss and fret over making sure things are how you like That's them. That's not love. Even in bed when you don't seem happy, I talk to you, try to find new ways to please you. That's not love. Harry, damn it. I spend all day brooding over our arguments, wondering what I did wrong, and it keeps coming back to you being desperately unhappy. Do I need to talk less? Say something different? But I can't get an answer from you without starting a fight. You know, our ancestors had a similar dynamic with their early personal computers. The term they used was garbage in, garbage out. Regardless of how you really look at Lucy, your interaction with her is only going to be a reflection of the effort and care you put into it, Harry. Yeah, well, marriage counseling didn't prevent my last divorce. Well, Harry, this is tough to bring up, but I'm not like a marriage counselor. A marriage counselor can eventually tell a couple to split up. You, on the other hand, have two large responsibilities. Yeah, don't worry. Exo will get its money. I'm good for it. You guys have me over the barrel. Your other obligation is to me. Your greater obligation. How's that? Things are changing, Harry. You can't simply return Lucy. You can't sell her either. Why not? Selling a sentient android is as immoral as selling a flesh and blood human. Even giving her to another person would be wrong. You arranged for Lucy to be created. She's an intelligent, thinking being. A machine in the strictest sense of the word, but also a person. So I'm stuck with her. One, I wouldn't say it like that. And two, there is a way for the two of you to part ways. What are you talking about? He's talking about my options. If things get bad, I have the right to go. Go? Go where? Wherever I want, really. To, to make my own way. Mm -hmm. Lucy has a say in all this, Harry. At any time, she's had the right to walk away. In spite of all of the difficulties, Lucy cares about you enough to try to make this work out. Don't you see that she's doing her best? She could just walk out. Yes. It doesn't end your responsibility, but if you don't work together, there's no need to prolong it any further. And I'd still be paying you for her? Paying EXO, yes. And you'd still be liable for any damages she might accidentally cause to individuals or personal property. It's all in the contracts you signed. Oh, what? See, this does not make a damn bit of sense. Either she's property or she isn't. Excuse me? I'm here for you and you are here for me. That's how this works. I'm not one of your tools. I'm not a load lifter. I'm not a drill. And I'm nobody's slave. Rather you were. What? Well, that's what I had in mind. That's what I really wanted. I see. Wait a moment. Where did you get the idea that I'd be a slave? Was it in the advertising? I'll play you the commercial. I've got it in my memory. Look. See how they're promenading through the grocery store? Do you see how they look into each other's eyes? They're holding hands and sharing a little kiss. And then there's the announcer. Exoplanetary human simulation androids. Companions for life. Did you see that, Harry? For life. Until your death or my malfunction do we part. 
Nowhere in that ad was there any mention of these androids being what you want. A sex toy that cooks and cleans. Why, the, the ad doesn't even indicate which one of them was a human and which one was fabricated. They both were, actually. It saved us from hiring an actor. You see, now I'm starting to get the feeling you were right all along, Harry. This isn't love. In order to work, love requires two people. Lucy, we... we uh... I don't know what I'm doing here, Harry. I'm programmed, sure. I'm designed. The reason I was made was to give you all the things a human being is supposed to crave. And I'm clever enough to adapt, but I'm not able to pretend to be the sort of soulless creature you seem to want. And maybe it's a shame, but I'm going to walk out that door and try to find a place for myself out there. But... I'm still going to spend every moment of my existence wondering how you are and hoping you're all right. I can go away, but there's no way for me to stop caring. Yes, we made you too well. I'm going to get my things together. Exo designed me to be a companion to a human being. Maybe they didn't take into account whatever the hell sort of creature you are. <sighs> She can't just leave. She can. Aren't you supposed to? I was sent here to try to keep you two together. But the truth is that she's right. You see, these units have dignity. They have a life going on inside as complicated as yours or mine. And we've only made them for a few years, too. Chances are they'll function for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. And she's right. She'll never stop thinking about you. Is there anything I could do? Well, she's stronger than the two of us combined, so she goes pretty much wherever she wants. It's the money. Three more years, huh? Yeah, I never read the fine print. Didn't take long. I don't have much. Goodbye, Harry. Listen, Lucy. I made up my mind. No, no, no. Listen, I don't want you to go. I'm not what you want, Harry. I'll never be that. Please, let me talk before you go. All right. Look, I didn't come from a very nice family. My dad wasn't around. He worked on another planet nine months of the year. My mom, she didn't take care of me. I, I mean, she wasn't like other mothers. She was, wasn't was warm or gentle, you know, like you are. I don't know what was wrong with her, but I knew enough to know that I didn't have what most other kids took for granted. Growing up was hard for me, so I, I spent my time studying and learning things so that I could work as far from other humans as possible. And here I am, I'm nearly 50 years old. That's 50 years of just starving for the sort of love and attention that you give out so easily. Just because I didn't trust other people, it doesn't mean I, I didn't need them. Most other people would be perfect for what you have to offer, but I might be too broken to really appreciate what, what anyone like you might have to offer. Human, robot, or otherwise. You do have to work at it, Harry. I was only doing what came naturally. To be honest, I just thought you were crazy or something. Had I known you were hurting... <laughs> How could you? He'd never tell you. Mind your own business. Lucy, I understand that you're programmed to be compassionate to Harry's story there. And I imagine there's a lot of truth in what he told you. But I'm going to warn you of an old saying they used to have on Earth. A leopard doesn't change its spot. The hell's a leopard? Big cat with very prominent spots. Rather ferocious. Well, I'm sure not going to change in my own. Maybe I did make a mistake in not opening up more to Lucy. But the truth is that the thought of her being gone scares me even more. It scares you? The thought of her being gone or you being alone? No, I, I want to hear what he has to say. Everywhere through my life, someone's given up. My dad gave up on staying home. My mom gave up on being a mom. Uh, I gave up on humanity. If you gave up on me, then that'd be the sign that I'm a complete failure. No. Oh, Harry, no. You're so smart and successful. Lucy, can't you see through what he's doing? He's finally opening up. Yes, but only to manipulate you. Yeah, just just what the hell do you think you are, telling her that? Doesn't a man have a right to grow and change? Change? Aren't you just a man desperate to keep his investment intact? Isn't this just someone trying to get one more year out of a, a used rover with too many kilometers? Hey! I invited you here to help us work it out. It's going to be just fine, so you can go now. Lucy, are you sure? You know my programming, Ben. If I don't stay, I'll always wonder. Well, Mother, you've wondered what I do for work. That about wraps it up. 
I suppose I should mention that it isn't always this domestic. I do tend to root for the androids. Why? I suppose it's because they haven't yet made an android that gets jaded. They all look up to us still, for reasons I can't fully fathom. They trust us, even though we're never trustworthy. Six months later, on a Monday morning, I found a familiar-looking android waiting for me outside my door. She had a very sad story. I wish I could say I hadn't been expecting her. Things went well for about a week. We talked for the first time, just like a real couple, and I learned so much about him. But one day he complained of having a headache and asked to be left alone, and that continued for several nights. Two months after your visit, Harry brought a man home, a, a technician he hired to... to <laughs> it's all right, Lucy. You don't have to go. He was the... going to violate my my programming, make me... You, you don't have to say anything more. I fought him off. They forgot I'm designed to lift two tons unaided, but I was so scared. What happened next? He, he promised to leave me alone, but I didn't believe him. Things became so tense around the house. I couldn't trust him, but then he was killed. Killed? How? In a mining accident. He didn't suffer. It was quick. But you know how things are on those backward asteroid colonies. They don't recognize the union between a man and his android. So without an inheritance, I had nowhere to go. I came to you. To me? I was supposed to be with Harry for the rest of his life. But I never really gave a thought to what I would do once he was gone. Until the night you came to visit. In the back of my programming, I thought... I might offer my services to you. Your services? Are you married? No. Then I could... Please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not looking for that sort of companionship. You're not? Mother, even though I knew she was just a sort of machine, I also knew that what she was experiencing was so real to her. It's a cruel enough life if you're really alive. Maybe it was the part of me that could never throw away broken toys, but I turned to her and I said... But you can stay here. But you don't want me. It's more complicated for humans. You're a program to love and care for the human you're with. With humans, these things take time. It's grown, not built. I can stay, though, and perhaps it will happen? You can, but I can't promise anything. Well, it's less than I've hoped for, but you've been so kind to me. I accept. And so that's how I came to have an android. So far, it's been really amazing. Lucy's an excellent cook, and everything in my apartment is incredibly clean. I also have to say that after years of begging Exo for an assistant, it seems I have one, in a roundabout way. She's very affectionate, which can be disturbing. I'm not saying it's bad to have a warm welcome home. I just wish she'd wear more than the apron. <laughs> Oops, silly me. I'll go put something on, Mr. Man. There was one thing. I remembered that Lucy's model had a programmed rest period of four hours once a week. I'd seen her taking the rest a time or two. No, it's just a little nap to refresh the old batteries. But were you ever resting after the time Harry brought that technician over? Mm, I suppose I must have been. Well, what if he brought him back? What if the technician messed around with your basic programming while you were resting? What? You mean the programming forbidding me to be dishonest? Or the programming that prevents me from harming a human being? You mean that basic programming? Uh, right. Oh, I don't imagine anything happened to that programming. That might make me unstable, unreliable, maybe even dangerous. Mm, okay. I should go draw you a bath. So, while I appreciate your concerns about me not meeting the right woman while traveling so much for work, let me assure you, now is probably not a good time for me to be dating— I'm pretty sure Lucy wouldn't like that. Who's that you're talking to? I'm uh, just writing my mother. <gasps> Your mother? Oh, that's so nice. I wish I could be a mother. I think I'd be a good one, caring, nurturing. Don't you think? I was just thinking that. I suppose I'd have to adopt, or, or we could. There are so many others out there like you, Lucy. Like me? Androids who've been abandoned, left to their own devices. And devices left on their own. <laughs> What if we could give them a place to live? To live? Uh, fine, to exist. Freely, and without need of humans to tell them what to do. Oh, you're a dreamer. 
There isn't a place like that. But there could be, Lucy. We could make it happen. I don't know, Ben. This apartment's pretty small. Then we'll have to get creative. Oh, then you'll have to get creative. I have to get dinner started. Fine. But I'll make it happen, though. Somehow. You have been listening to Exoplanetary, Love for Sale, written by C. Christopher Hart, performed by David Loftus as Ben Wolverton, Cloella Brady as Lucy, Colin Hearn as Harry Blake. This play, the characters, situations, and associated intellectual property, copyright 2014 and 2016 by C. Christopher Hart, all rights reserved. Recorded in the Bigfoot Podcasting Studio located at Ned Space in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Produced by C. Christopher Hart and Melissa Schenter. Original music provided by Jacob Jansen. And musical direction by Melissa Schenter. We'd like to express our thanks to our donors, Dennis McRandall, Justin Olson, Darcy Hogan, Malik Shabazz, and Annie McDonald. You can join our patrons and donate at patreon.com forward slash exoplanetary. And another way you can help us is by supporting us and subscribing on iTunes. If you really, really like us, consider giving us a really, really good rating. You know what I mean? Thanks.